it has come to my attention that I have not shown you guys my backyard. Now my backyard isn't a huge terrain of grass fields and turf that will stretch on from end to end, but it does have a very comfortable bean bag. I use this bean bag specifically to find videos that you guys will enjoy. And boy, you're going to love this Salomon Great deck profile. Now for the people that didn't know, Salomon Greats are one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! Yes, as good as Edlich, as good as Ad Emancipator, and as good as those other strategies. Salomon Great Post Eternity Code gives it a variety of new options. The strategy now has the ability to put over 10,000 damage on the board along the way of destroying opponent's cards. It also still plays true and true to the Salomon Great strategy, using those hand traps to stop your opponent from playing Yu-Gi-Oh, being able to self-sustain once the engine goes, and now even being able to dodge hand traps like Nibiru on the first turn. In this video, I'm gonna show you how. Okay guys, so what I have here is a Salomon Great deck profile post Eternity Code. I'm going to be going over this deck profile and explaining why I play certain cards. And don't worry, for the people that can't afford certain cards, I will be including budget options. Also, if you guys want to get really budget, I also have a under 100 video where I built a Salomon Great deck profile for under $100. Be sure to check that out. So we're going to start off by talking about the monsters. Salomon Greats are rather intricate as they are the best cybers type deck, quote unquote, but still you want to take advantage of Salomon Great monsters. With that being said, I do play two copies of Jack Jaguar, one copy of Salomon Great Fowl, one Falco, one Gazelle, one Foxy, one Spinny, and one Salomon Great Mole. Now, the Salomon Great engine has decreased over time for a couple of reasons. The first thing is that we don't have Salomon Great Mirage Stalio. It pretty much means that you just don't have to play as many Salomon Great monsters inside of your strategy in order for you to see said Salomon Great cards. We have so many extender and search cards that it's pretty insane. I think that this is a really good line for Salomon Great, um, but if you guys wanted to play more Salomon Great monsters, I would say definitely consider playing more Foxy and maybe more Spinny. Um, Fowl could also be another monster, but the other Salomon Great monsters typically aren't worth their salt. That's it for the Salomon Great monsters we currently play. Next, I play two copies of Lady Debug and two copies of Flame Buffalo. These are going to be our normal summonables. And as you guys can see, I really only play four, where in typical deck building, you wanna play at least five normal summons. Now, the reason being is because Foxy is my fifth normal summon pseudo that can also act as an extender. But the reason why I play two and two is because after you resolve maybe one of your Lady Debugs, the rest of your Lady Debugs don't become as important. Now granted, you could use Lady Debug a second time to get it an important Salomon Great Monster, but after that, the third Lady Debug is almost useless every single time. It's almost the exact same thing with Flame Buffalo. Flame Buffalo is an amazing normal summon, but after you draw and discard so many Cyburst monsters, you kinda don't wanna do that. Sometimes you're looking for a specific Salomon Great or Cyburst monster, and that's where Lady Debug comes in hand, and sometimes you just want to get more resources from your deck to your hand, potentially get those spell or trap cards that can disrupt your opponent or hand traps, and that's where Flame Buffalo. Moving forward, we do play three copies of Parallel XE. Let me move all this out of the way. We do play three copies of Parallel XE. This is amazing. It actually allows Salomon Great to toolbox rank fours, as well as still continue on with their line of play. And that's going to sum up all of the monsters with the extenders. For the hand traps, we play two copies of Ash Blossom, or three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, and two copies of DD Crow. Now, I chose DD Crow over Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill. I just feel that DD Crow is so versatile in this current format. Now, Ghost Mourner is another form of monster disruption, and I don't think I'll ever say it's a bad card. It looks amazing, it's cool. But DD Crow is a whole nother level of disruption. It can hit any card in the graveyard. And as you guys should know, this is a pretty graveyard reliant format. So far, I don't think we have went over any true budget options. Again, if you're looking for better alternatives to Lady Debug and cards like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, then go ahead and check that under 100 video. I'll start to address the really expensive cards and give you guys budget alternatives. 
For the spells, we play three copies of Pot of Desires and three copies of Cynet Mining. These would be the play starter cards. Uh, Pot of Desires is freaking phenomenal. There's really only three cards you don't really want to banish. One is being both your Jag Jaguars, uh, your Salomon Great Gazelle, and of course your Salomon Great Sanctuary. But sometimes banishing them doesn't really mean anything as it is two free cards from your deck to your hand and can help you further your play extension combos. Cynet Mining is also the reinforcement of the army but i want to stick this to your head if you're discarding a solomon great monster which a lot of them have graveyard effects you can add solomon great gazelle and then special summon it even even though gazelle did not see the solomon great monster being sent to the graveyard which is really awesome Two copies of Call by the Grave to prevent from being hand trapped. Two copies of Will of the Solomon Great. Dropped it down a little bit because we do play less Solomon Great monsters. And then one Sanctuary and one Solomon Great Circle. Do not forget that Circle actually has protection effects in case you need it. That is it for these spells. Moving on to the traps, I play three copies of Infinite Impermanence. Um, fret not, if you can't afford Infinite Impermanences, ladies and gentlemen, I strongly suggest just playing Effect Veilers. They almost do the exact same thing, except Effect Veiler can be played when you have cards on your side of the field from the hand. Next is two copies of Solomon Great Roar, two copies of Solomon Great Rage, and only one copy of Grave Digger's Trap Hole. Now, in the live duel that you guys may have seen, we played two copies of Grave Digger's Trap Hole because we were testing out how many Grave Digger's Trap Holes should you play. And the correct answer is anywhere between zero and two. If you really fear Nibiru or don't want to be hand trapped, sometimes you want to try out something new, Grave Digger's Trap Hole is amazing. It provides disruption to those hand traps and also gives you another form of disruption on your opponent's turn and it's free with Parallel Exceed because more often than not, that's just two level four monsters to your side of the field. Continue on with your plays. If you can't afford Grave Digger's Trap Hole, fret not, ladies and gentlemen. I actually would recommend playing another copy of Solomon Great War or Rage. The Solomon Great strategy, ever since it did lose Mirage Stalio, has lost a little bit of its consistency piece of getting either the Jack Jaguar or one of these to the hand. If you increase your potential of drawing these cards, Pot of Desires becomes more valuable because less opportunities to banish all three of them. And then on top of that, you also get the ability to potentially open one, if not both in your hand. That's all that we have for the trap cards. Moving on to the extra deck, I'm gonna play Big Daddy Excess Code Talker. This card is freaking phenomenal. It's extremely easy to summon. I'll show you guys in a quick combo tutorial. And uh, basically it wins the game. You can make this card attack twice and be 5,300 in a little quick combo. And uh, yeah, it can destroy cards on your opponent's side of the field by banishing link monsters with different attributes. The card is completely amazing. If you guys cannot afford Access Code Talker, playing the Silent One Great Pyro Phoenix, double of those if you had those or wanted to play them, it's A-OK -okay by me. Also, Boro Low Dragon is really good and gets over so many threats that Salomon Great can't get over. Two copies of Heat Leo, one Transco Talker, one Update Jammer. This is still a very valuable OTK, but Excess Code Talker OTK is even better. Three copies of Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf, one Nightmare Phoenix, three copies of Bay Lynx, one Dweller, one Baguska, and one Trap Tricks for Flacia. Now, one thing that I don't play inside of this deck that other players have been playing is Splash Mage. I don't think that Sla Splash Mage is a bad card whatsoever, but I wound up dropping the Splash Mage for Nightmare Phoenix because I noticed there are quite a few decks that can put tokens on your side of the field. Dino, Orcus, anything that plays Gearsu can put a token on your side of the field. And a smart player will put the token to the extra monster zone that they're not occupying, which leaves you in a really interesting situation. So I had to play a way to get rid of that token because it wasn't going to be a cyburst or whatever. And Nightmare Phoenix was a great card that came up and provided back row destruction, as well as allowed me to get rid of the token and still was a fire monster. If you guys aren't playing the Trap Tricks for Flacia engine, then of course you can just drop the Trap Tricks for Flacia for Splash Mage. But that's pretty much it for the main board and the extra deck. Now I'm going to you guys this ever so powerful assess code talker otk okay guys so this combo pretty much requires three cybers monsters it does not matter the only downside is that you could only summon cybers monsters throughout the duration of the turn i'm gonna go ahead and swag out and say we have lady debug in parallel exceed because it does make the combo outrageous and with a couple of under extenders you can go full solomon great combo if it doesn't pan out so what you're gonna do is start off by normal summoning your lady debug i'm gonna add a solomon great gazelle but you can add any level three or lower solomon great monster from your deck to your hand 
Spider-Man or Cyber Monster, link off your Lady Debug and then activate its effect. And as Chain Link 2, go ahead and use your Parallel X Seed. Now I'm using Parallel X Seed as Chain Link 2 to block my opponent from being able to Ash Blossom my Bay Links. Unfortunately, Parallel X Seed's effect does activate in a separate chain, so I'll special summon my second one. They could Ash Blossom that, but it doesn't matter. If they do, you're A okay. From there, I'm going to use both my Parallel X Seeds into a Link Summon into Update Jammer. And then I'm going to use my Bay Links and my Update Jammer into a Link into Transco Talker. Now, normally you would have used the effect of Update Jammer and applied it to Transco Talker, but I'm not. I'm going to use the effect of Transco Talker to Special Summon Update Jammer. And now I'm going to use Transco Talker and Update Jammer for Link into Excess Code Talker. Now, the amazing thing about this is that not only does Excess Code Talker to get the target, the uh, Trans Code Talker, it'll become 5,600 attack points. Also, it can banish up the three monsters because because they do have different attributes to destroy three of our opponent's cards, and what makes it even worse, this card can attack twice, putting over 10,000 damage on the board. So sometimes you can't always get into that combo, but that's okay. I can show you guys another way to make Excess Code Talker. The only thing you need to do is play Splash Mage. So what we're gonna do, it requires any two Cyber monsters. Uh, we're gonna Normal Summon Salomon Great Foxy, Excavate 3, and then discard Spinny, and then Special Summon it to our side of the field. From there, we'll use Spinny and the Salomon Great Foxy into a Link into our Splash Mage. Splash Mage will special summon our Salomon Great Foxy back to our side of the field. And now our Foxy and our Mage will be linked into our Transco Talker. Talker's effect will activate the special summon the Splash Mage back to our side of the field, Splash Mage. And then we'll link off our Transco Talker and our Splash Mage into that Access Code Talker. Now this one isn't going to be as good. It's still 5,600, but cannot attack twice and can destroy two cards on the field, which is not that bad. The last thing I'm gonna show you is not necessarily a combo, but just a point of emphasis. We're gonna bring back Parallel Exceed and Lady Debug in our hand, and I'm gonna show you just something really important that Salomon Great players must know. I'm gonna Normal Summon Lady Debug and activate the effect to add Salomon Great Gazelle from my deck to my hand, and then I'm gonna link off the Lady Debug to Special Summon my Bay Links. Parallel Exceed is Chain Link 2, Bay Links as Chain Link 1 and then Parallel Exceed's other effect to Special Summon another copy to my side of the field. Now the important thing that I must get to every single Salomon Great player is to seriously consider playing Trap Tricks for Flacia. From here, I can use both Parallel Exceed's for an Exceed Summon into my Reflacia, and now my opponent has to fear the Trap Tricks for Flacia. Reason being is if they decide to try to hand trap me through this sequence, whether it be Ash Blossom, Nibiru, or whatever it is, I can always use Trap Tricks for Flacia to detach one material inflict 2,000 damage for them and negate that monster effect. If I were you, I would strongly consider playing this particular combo inside of the deck. Regardless, I feel that you probably should pick up Reflacious and Gravedigger's Trap Holes because some deck is going to abuse it. Well, that's pretty much it for the Solomon Great in-depth deck profile. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys wanted to see a live game, then that's right there. Go ahead and click on it. Or you can just go through the Solomon Great playlist. Solomon Greats are an awesome deck to play, and I really hope to show you guys more of it on this channel. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys are staying safe and having an amazing day like I soon will be.